three o'clock now. The A to Z of curious, not a Yusha, that's what it says on the front, strange stories of mysteries, crimes and eccentrics. Sounds absolutely fascinating, doesn't it? Uh, Frank Erb is the man who has written this book and is here this afternoon. Hello, Frank. Hello. That is a brilliant title, Strange Stories of Mysteries, Crimes and Eccentrics. What, what's the book about? Uh, it's, a, it's actually part of a series uh, that History Press carry out county by county. Yeah. So this is actually the Nottinghamshire edition. Yeah. So it's, it's literally what, what it says on the cover. Uh, stories of Nottinghamshire mysteries, uh, strange facts, curious people, eccentrics, ghost stories little bit of history so it's something for everyone and it is it is brilliant having a quick flick through there's there's some fascinating stories in here and it goes back i mean the, the one that really grabbed my attention straight away was this one from 19 no 1783 that's how young it is kitty hudson that's right a very curious case uh, kitty hudson was actually the ninth patient to be admitted to the newly opened general hospital and at the time, she caused quite a stir uh, yeah. because, of, because of the uh, events that took place while she was admitted. Go on then, I think you better go into um, this a little bit. Well, she, she, was, she was actually sent to, uh, as a small child, she was actually sent to her uncle's, who was the church warden at uh, St Mary's Church in the Lace Market, and sort of thing to, to make her work for a living he got her to do cleaning jobs in the church. Okay. And it was her job to go around picking up pins that, that had been dropped onto the floor. Uh, and she was encouraged by the actual full-time maid to put the pins in her mouth to, to store them. And this maid then got sort of a, a, a joke out of it by saying to Kitty, if you put more pins in your mouth, I'll give you a sweet. So poor Kitty would regularly put pins into her mouth uh, but then it, it, it became a habit with her and it became almost an addiction so she was she was unable to perform the simplest of tasks without a mouthful of pins and this went on until she was in her early 20s I, I, I believe until the pins actually started to come out of her body and they started to emerge from uh, sort of growths on her skin, they, they would bubble up uh, and out would pop a pin. Wow. So she was actually admitted to hospital with uh, aches and pains in various parts of her body. And over a period of a year, she was uh, sort of kept in hospital, uh, released for sort of days out or for a couple of weeks, but always brought back again. Uh, and these pins began to emerge from all sorts of places, and particularly around her breasts. And in the end, the unfortunate uh, girl ended up having both breasts removed uh, because, of, because of the effect of the pins. Gosh. Um, it sounds like she was kind of almost like a human porcupine. I would way. say so. I would say so very much. But she was certainly a curiosity at the time. And uh, it, it's, it's a well-documented case in, in medical circles where they were debating as to how these pins were emerging and where they were coming from. Uh, so it got them scratching their heads. Yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, Frank, stay there for us just for, for, right. for a few minutes. We'll hear some more stories from this book. The A to Z of Curious Nottinghamshire. It is strange stories of mysteries, crime and eccentrics. And even from that first story then, um, I think I think we're up for some more interesting things after the news. Um, because it is half past three now. Um, coming out, um, coming out of her skin.
Gregory Porter, hey Laura on BBC Radio Nottingham. Uh, you were hearing earlier on, um, just before the news, from Frankie Earp talking about um, this young girl, Kitty Hudson, who used to eat needles and then they started um, coming out of her skin. All of this is from his book, The A to Z of Curious Nottinghamshire. And Frank, you, you look at ghosts as well, don't you? So you've got, on the one hand, you've got these medical stories where they come from the hospital, but then also there's this chapter on ghosts as well. Well, that's well. right. I mean, you, you, you can't fail to have ghost stories under G for ghosts, can you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's an alphabet of curiosities after all, so uh, yes, the, there are six ghost stories, um, three of which are family ghost stories, and three of which are ghost stories that are already in circulation, or my versions of them. Yeah, because Charlie the halfway house ghost uh, is, is, is all to do with, with the room in which you were born in, in many I respects. Couldn't, I couldn't resist that. I, after all, I was born in a haunted house, but I don't actually believe in ghosts myself. I don't actually believe in ghosts as an intelligent uh, entity. Uh, I, I think them as rather a... a Aberration of the human mind. Okay, so what was it then? What was it like growing up in a? Was it actually a haunted house? Then, it was actually say, or, a haunted yeah. house. Yes, I was actually born in the haunted bedroom. Um, I never actually saw anything myself or witnessed anything myself. Um, I lived there until I was five year old. Uh, the house itself is now demolished. It was an old farmhouse, part of the Woolerton estate. Um, the the my grandfather had uh, had the farm since uh, the 1930s and my father had the actual bedroom that we sort of inherited as a family so he was well used to the ghost and my grandfather was well used to the ghost yeah. uh, and it was my grandfather that actually nicknamed the, uh, the appearance as Charlie uh, he would used to say he, he used to say go to sleep early tonight because Charlie's walking Oh, right. Oh, so he used it as a way to... to well, yeah. not necessarily to me, but to, it, it was... Uh, over, it was such a big house that over the years, virtually every member of the family, when they were starting out, actually stopped with my grandparents. So they, they, they'd all experienced and had some experience of it. You mentioned just then Woolerton, because there's also a Woolerton colliery ghost that you write that, about. Again, that's another story from the family, and that's, that's my father's tale. Um... For a period when I was growing up, my father was a miner and worked down Bulletin Pit. Um, and he recalls that one of the workings was an old working and it was flooded. Mm. So therefore it was uh, out of use and they used to pass by the end of the gallery uh, on, on the way coming, coming up from the pit. And it was all said that it was haunted. And the, the apparition that was seen was a miner's light on uh, the, the headlamp and you would hear the noise of someone wading through water and you would see the light bobbing towards you in the d darkness Sounds quite chilly. but the thing was that it never got any closer so you would hear the footsteps and see the light but it never appeared to get any closer um, and on one occasion they, they had a, a sort of new face worker, a new miner, and you, you, you know what miners are like, they're, they're, they're very pragmatic, very down to earth, um, and they were sort of pulling his leg and saying, oh, you wouldn't dare go down there, it's haunted, and he of course said, yes, oh yes, I'll go down, and went along these workings, came back five minutes later as white as a sheet, and would not say what he had seen, but he, he cursed them all. Mm. liberally mm. and swore that he would never ever even under pain of torture go back down the gallery again I think that probably tells you everything you need to know it doesn't it does, yes. <laughs> I mean obviously the last stories a couple of stories you mentioned are family stories but where are the others from where have you managed to compile these from basically it's a lifetime's work um, I've, I've been interested in folklore and local history uh, really since I was 15 so it's well over 40 years, something like 40, 47 years, so um, a lot of interest, and I've, I, I've known about events uh, like the Bessie Shepherd murder and whatever for years and years, it's just been a matter of putting them together into a book. Yeah. The Hat Man is, 
is one that's one of the, the better known, isn't it? Uh, it's one of the better known ghost stories, but perhaps not under that uh, under that title. It's actually the George's Hill Ghost, yeah. which, is, which is near Calverton. Uh, and I've connected it with the now famous Hat Man. And what it is, the, the, back in the 60s, uh, a gentleman going back from Goose Fair uh, encountered an apparition that was a figure of uh, a, a man in a black coat, a black cloak rather, with a broad-brimmed hat pulled down over one eye uh, and a silver chain about his neck. Um, and this, this apparition followed him for a good way back back into Kelverton and literally frightened the life out of him almost. Um, and the same sort of story has been uh, perpetuated with people actually seeing the, the same entity in the back of the car when they've been driving up George's Hill. Um, but now, uh, if you Google search Hatman, this same apparition has been literally seen all over the world. Uh, but you get the first appearance, almost the, the first recorded appearance back in Kelverton in yeah. the 60s. Wow. Fascinating. Frank, thank you very much for popping in. You're not the only Earth, are you, that, that, no, writes, I'm not. No, that no. writes about history? No, no. Quite recently, my son has sort of beat me to the post by publishing a book called uh, Nottingham in Old Photographs. So that's <laughs> and, Joseph Herb. And he's beat you to the post in the he, sense of it's... He has. Uh, mine's a lifetime's work, a lifetime's of study. His has been sort of prepared within six months. And... Uh, different publishers but his publisher got his out first and how's everything round the dinner table is it is it, oh, is it competition it's, or? it's quite amicable it's <laughs> just that uh, on the way here i checked to see if waterstones were actually ca carrying copies of my book so that i could actually say to people well you can go along to waterstones and get one um but while i was there i was told that uh, uh, Joseph's book had actually uh, sold 12 copies already since it was launched a couple of days ago. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to catch up and beat him. <laughs> That's the aim anyway. It is, That's yes. it. I suppose his success is your success it in many respects. It certainly is. Uh, I, I might say that I taught him everything he knows. Yeah, I think that's the best way to get it. So can you get yours in Waterstones yet? You can at the moment. It's, it's also available at Amazon. Lovely. Uh, Frankie, you're up there. Thank you very much Thank for coming you. in. Uh, the book is called The A to Z of Curious Nottinghamshire. Strange stories of mysteries, crimes and eccentrics. Brilliant stories just told then.